that neither the Board of Regents nor the department would take the position that decision making should be based on a single assessment. Assessment should be one of multiple measures used to look at whether it's student performance or educator performance. And in fact, that is the approach that we that we recommend to districts around decisions on such things as promotion. It is also the approach that is taken in the state's teacher and principal evaluation law, which sets the portion of the evaluation that is attributable to growth on state tests at 20%. Stop wasting our time. That, yeah, that, 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 law, that law requires growth on state tests to be 20% of the evaluation, but then leaves a decision making about the other 80% to districts and their bargaining units. It's important to All I hear is percentages. What about the kids? One of the... Answer the question, sir. Please. One of the questions that was raised was around assessments beyond those that are required by federal law, beyond the state test. The decisions, the decisions about those assessments are made locally through collective bargaining on the locally selected measures. The How students progress, how they grow on assessments is a valid factor to include in a multiple measures evaluation. We, we, may, we, may, we may disagree about that, but it's important. So, we move on from the evaluation system again. One of, one of the speakers was the North Port superintendent, talked about a number of recommendations, many of which, again, we agree with. The phase-in of the Common Core is set as a seven-year phase-in. The standards were adopted in 2010. The first class of students to graduate required to pass Common Core Regents exams will graduate in 2017. It's a seven-year phase-in. The assessments changed after three years, spring of 2013. The high school assessments begin to change this year, and the phase-in will continue through 2017. So we, we have been very careful to have a thoughtful phase-in of the Common Core time. My confidence, my confidence about the state's ability, the state's ability to meet those higher standards is grounded in the fact that we had a similar phase in of the phase out of the local diploma, where over time the local diploma was phased out. And one of the things people said at the start of that, at the start of that process, people said fewer students would graduate, students wouldn't be able to meet the higher standards. But in fact, what happened over the phase out of the local diploma was that graduation rates consistently went up. More students were graduating with higher standards than before those higher standards were adopted. Another... We uh, request, please, respect, uh, uh, silence, please, let Dr. Fisher speak. Other recommendations, thank you. Other, other recommendations address the question of funding equity and ensuring that there is adequate funding for schools. Uh, the Board of Regents has long advocated for greater equity in school finance and for more resources for schools. In particular, last year, uh, the Regents advocated for a greater investment in early childhood education. That was mentioned by another speaker. I think that is a critical investment for student success with respect to the Common Core and ultimately with respect to college and career readiness. One of the speakers talked about so, a couple, several of the speakers talked about the issue of curriculum. Curriculum is determined locally. 
Standards are set by the state, but curriculum decisions are made locally. No one, no one would advocate, no one would advocate, and certainly the department does not, for a curriculum to be reduced to the assessment. Indeed, what the Common Core aspires to achieve is more hands-on learning more opportunities for students to write, more opportunities for students to do problem solving and math. And in fact, when I, visit, when I visit classrooms, what I'm struck by is exactly that work that is happening. Uh, one of the speakers talked about the text that students are engaged with. I was in a classroom in Harlem, in central Harlem, two weeks ago, talking with two, uh, two students comparing how in their reading, one was reading To Kill a Mockingbird, the other, Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. And the students were discussing with evidence drawn from the text, the common themes between those two texts. That is the kind of work that the Common Core intends to achieve. Now, we need, we need more professional development, for sure, to get there, and that is, that is something to which the department is very committed. One, one final point on something that, that was raised. One more, one more point on something that was raised about field testing. Um, one of the things that the board discussed at their last meeting was some strategies to reduce the level of field testing. But I have to say, there is a tension between the amount of field testing and the desire for more released assessment items. The more assessment items that are released, the more field testing that is required. Our goal is to try to find ways to reduce field testing. Our goal is also to make sure that we have the minimum testing time that we need to inform good decision making. We lowered last year the testing time for third and fourth grade. We will, we are again looking at ways to reduce the amount of time allocated to state tests, but ultimately, much of the testing climate that we are all concerned about is bound up with a series of local decisions. And we're working with districts now to review yeah. their APPR yeah. plans. And there are districts around the state that have found ways to reduce right. the number of assessments they committed to through the APPR. For example, there are districts <laughs> that, here. We can count. upon reflection on the first year of APPR implementation, decided that they would, rather than use pretest, for example, for setting goals, that they would instead uh, that they would instead use prior academic history to reduce assessments. There are districts that made the choice to use school level measures rather than other measures for the locally selected measures in their, in their APPR. We'll continue to work with districts to find ways uh, to reduce those assessments where they think that is in the best interest of their students and instructionally sound. You said test like 25 times. Thank you, Commissioner. Privacy. Our next speaker representing the Kings Park Central School District will be Marie Goldstein. Good evening. My name is Ralph Partisano, the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction at in King's